Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. We're rapidly approaching a blue ocean event. That'll be an event where we lose all the Arctic sea ice. So by the end of the melt season, say mid-September, in a year very soon, maybe in the next four or five years, say, uh, we're gonna, all the sea ice will have melted out over the summer. And that's gonna have profound implications to us at lower latitudes. It's gonna have profound implications for the planet. And I'm gonna to try to explain how in this video. So, basically the Earth is a heat engine. It's all about the heat transport. Heat is, the equators are very hot, right? Perpetual sunlight. Well, perpetual. 12 hours of, of uh, daylight, 12 hours of night, and um, no seasonality, right? That's the same year round. The equator is very, very hot. The poles are very, very cold, right? It's a geometry problem. The sun's way out there. It's, the earth is tilted, depends on the angle of the tilt <coughs> and the location of the earth in, the, in its orbit around the sun, etc. But basically the idea is the pole is cold, the equator is hot, heat is transported uh, from the equator to the pole. It does so in the atmosphere and it does so also in the ocean currents. Now, because the Earth is rotating, it's rotating this way, sun rises in the east, sets in the west, so the Earth is rotating, rotating this way, okay? So what happens is, is there's a large horizontal velocity at the equator because it's the furthest distance from the rotation axes. So when things move northward, they still have that high horizontal component to the right. So basically, things moving on the surface, they deflect to the right in the northern hemisphere. So the air moving up deflects to the right, and it concentrates and makes these jet streams, which circumvent the planet. Okay, now, if the Arctic is very cold, then those jet streams are quite strong. And when they're strong, then they go mostly from west to east, so they're more zonal, we say. The meridional uh, excursions, the waves are, they're, they're, uh, when the jet stream is moving fast, the waves in the north and south direction are smaller, okay, the Rosby waves. Now what's happening is that the Arctic is warming incredibly fast because we're losing the snow cover on the land, we're losing the Arctic sea ice. And uh, so the Arctic is a lot darker place. It's absorbing more solar radiation. It's heating up a lot faster than the global average. And it's, it, there's something called Arctic temperature amplification. So it's mostly an albedo or a reflectivity type effect. So the Arctic is warming extremely fast. The sea ice is receding fast, snow cover. There's less of it. So the Arctic is getting darker. So the temperature is rising a lot more and it lowers the temperature difference to the equator, so the jet stream slows down in its west to east movement. And it becomes wavier in the north-south direction, and the topography of the land underneath becomes more important in guiding where the ridges are and where the troughs are. Now, unfortunately, we're very rapidly heading to the first blue ocean event, when the ice in the Arctic melts out. And say this happened in 2022, for the sake of argument, that would be probably a week or two in September, there'd be no sea ice, and then it would start forming again in, in, for the next winter. Um, within a few years, the feedbacks, strong feedbacks kick in, and basically we're likely to have no sea ice for August, September, October, three months of the year. Within a few more years, you can tack on another ice-free month on either end of that. July, tack on July, so we have July, August, September, October, and tack on November, November. So no sea ice for five months of the year, six months of the year. And then I'd say within a decade of the first blue ocean event, of course there is year-to-year -year variability. Uh, we don't know for sure, 
um, this is what I think, there'll be, there'll be no ice year round in the Arctic and we'll be in a very, very different type of state. So what are the implications to humanity of a blue ocean event? Now, the uh, jet streams, as they're slowing down because of the Arctic warming, we're getting more and more ridges and troughs in the waves, and these are becoming stuck or pegged to the topography. So we're getting long-term droughts, for example. We're getting torrential rains because the storms aren't being carried by fast-moving jet streams. They stall out. Um, and this is of concern. This, for example, makes things like hurricanes behave differently. So Harvey, when it went ashore in Texas uh, last year, it stalled out and just sort of churned around and did loop-the-loops and stuff, and it dumped five feet of rain on, on Texas. The concern in the next little while is Florence next week because it could stall out on the East Coast. Its trajectory is still being closely monitored, but it looks like it might be, you know, a hit with a Category 4 hitting the East Coast, uh, North Carolina or South Carolina, um, and it could stall out. If it stalls out like Harvey, then it's going to cause tremendous flooding on the East Coast of the U.S. So, but what else is going to happen? What, what do we expect to happen? Well, just think of this logically. So, right now, you know, in the winter the ice fills a basin, not all of it now, and then in the summer it melts back, and it's like a breathing entity, if you like, and it's mostly re reflective. We've got the ice on Greenland, which is highly reflective, right, unless it's covered in ash and, and, or gets melt ponds on it, and the reflectivity drop, but we've got this ice basin. So, if you take all of the location of where the ice is and where the snow is on the land and Greenland, you've got this white area, this white area. Um, this is the coldest area, if you like. So if you take the center of mass, the, the center, the weighted area center, if you like, um, you're not going to get exactly the North Pole, but it's going to be pretty close. And of course, this is the rotation axis of the Earth. So this sets up jet streams, which are more or less symmetric about the rotation of of axes, okay? That's what presently happens. Now what's going to happen when we have a blue ocean event, okay? That my, my globe here looks like a blue ocean event, okay? There's no ice in the Arctic. The only ice and cold spot in the Arctic is Greenland. The center of Greenland is about here at 73 degrees north. That's offset if you take 90, North Pole, minus 73, you get about 17 degrees. Okay, so the center, the cold center of the northern hemisphere will be Greenland, offset from the North Pole, about 17 degrees. Now this is obviously <coughs> a very different state from when we have an ice-covered ocean or sea ice left in the summer after the melt season. So this is a very, very different situation. The Earth is still going to be rotating, of course, about the pole. There's still going to be the Coriolis forces deflecting things to the right, but things tend to move from hot areas to cold areas. The hot area will be the equator, the cold area will be Greenland now, which is offset from the North Pole by that 17 degrees. So it's going to, we're going to get a change of the jet streams. Okay, and to first order, you would say, well, maybe the jet streams will shift. So if you're on the far side of the Earth, the jet streams were going through this region, maybe they'll shift up 17 degrees here. And if you're on the, um, if you're on the North American side, Earth is getting deflated. I think this is very uh, symbolic, going, we've got a limp Earth here. Okay, so, so if this is the cold area, it replaces the North Pole, the ice being the cold area, then the jet streams, you would expect that they would shift, right? So instead, of, if, they're, if, they're circ if the center of rotation of the jet streams was, used to be the North Pole and now it's lower here, you would expect that they would become asymmetric, okay? They'd be coming around the planet at an angle, they wouldn't be circling the pole so much, it'd be, you know, if, if it was based on just a temperature contract. Now, it, the Earth is still rotating about here, so there's going to be other effects going on. And uh, also, you know, it's going <coughs> to, 
<coughs> it'd be a very unstable situation. Normally what we're used to is, as the seasons change, you know, as, it, as we get winter in the Arctic, the ice forms up. As we go to the summer, the ice retreats. But the center of cold, the center of rotation pretty much still matches the center of um, cold, cold, area, cold areas, basically. Um, it might be, it's pulled a little bit out towards Greenland because Greenland is, uh, you know, it's still cold down here, which is sort of the lowest latitude coldest of the, of the Arctic, because it, you know, well, you can talk about the ice on here and snow and stuff too. So, but the point is, is when there's no sea ice, the center of the cold area in the Arctic is Greenland, about 73 degrees. So that's going to shift the jet streams. So they're going to be shifted, they're going to be tilted, if you like, on the Earth. And um, this is going to add a feedback because this is going to continually bring colder air further south and hotter air up into the Arctic. And I think this is going to contribute to completely reaching that situation where you have a blue ocean event year-round in, in the Arctic. So it's very important, I think, for some people to look at some studies and to look at the, just a simple, geom the simple geometry of it. Look at the ice, how it varies over the year, the snow cover on the land, the ice and snow on Greenland. Calculate the center, if you like, the average center, the centroid of all that, and see how that shifts throughout the year as the ice is waxing and waning, growing and decreasing. And then look, what ha look at what happens when the ice is completely gone and you see that the centroid of coal has shifted down over Greenland and that will correspondingly lead to completely different jet streams which we're, we're not used to at all. First of all, if Greenland vanished and there was no cold in the Arctic, um, then, and we've had this um, in, in uh, deep uh, geological history of the Earth, the past, then, you know, are there jet streams existing at all? In which case, what is moving storms around? We'd have a world controlled by monsoons. We'd have a world controlled by weather patterns would be local and depend on the contrast between the land and the ocean, okay? Um, as the season changes, Land heats up and cools down much quicker than the ocean, so that would basically turn on and off monsoon type effects. So we're already starting to see monsoon type effects heading up, you know, into the Arctic, and I've discussed that also in, in uh, previous uh, videos. So extreme weather events are going to, uh, they're, they're, they're just going to take off. They're going to accelerate around the planet, and we're going to have a big challenge to grow food because the rainfall patterns will be shifting completely and they won't necessarily match up where the good soils are and we'll get these heat waves in regions with drought and torrential rains in other regions, both being not very conducive to growing crops. So this is a huge problem as the world population continues to uh, increase at a rate of about 1.4% uh, per year, something like that, exponential growth. Okay, so, I think it's pretty clear, um, you know, this isn't rocket science, this is uh, climate science, and, uh, <laughs> you know, just think about it. You know, looking at the Earth from space, instead of seeing that white cap on, this, on, on the Arctic Ocean, it's gone, it's not there. And when it's not there, you know, it's going to be cold over Greenland for quite a while, but also the melt rate from Greenland is going to skyrocket, as you can imagine and the seawater is going to all warm up. The other thing is, is the ocean currents shift in the Arctic. The local patterns of ocean currents will shift because what will happen is, instead of having the ice cover in the Arctic being cold in a high pressure area, and then the air leaves that circles to the right and giving us the Beaufort gyre and the transpolar drift, the Arctic will be, the ocean will be warmer. So especially in the fall, the Arctic's going to be a lot warmer Okay, air will move off the land, deflect to the right, and the, the Beaufort gyre will shift direction, and the transpolar shift will shift direction, and the transpolar shift going into the Arctic will...